welcome to Engine Fire Protection Systems. We hope that this video will give you a little insight about the different systems and components that prevents and protects a fire outbreak on an aircraft engine. Engine fire is often referred to as fire outside the engine but within the nacelle. Fire requires fuel, oxygen and a source of ignition to occur. An engine is designed to ensure that the prevention of engine fire ignition is achieved as much as possible. In most instances, failure of multiple components are necessary before a fire can occur. The engine is designed with a fixed fire detection and protection system. The term fixed describes a permanently installed system in contrast to any type of portable fire extinguishing equipment such as a handheld carbon dioxide fire extinguisher. Fire is one of the most dangerous threats to an aircraft. The potential fire zones of a modern multi-engine aircraft are protected by a fixed fire protection system. A fire zone is a region of an aircraft designed by the manufacturer to require fire detection and or fire extinguishing equipment and a high degree of inherent fire resistance. Flight crews should regard any fire warning as a fire, even if the indication goes away when the trust lever is retarded to idle. The indication might be the result of genetic leaks of hot air into the nacelle. The fire indication could also be from a fire that is small or sheltered from the detector so that the fire is not apparent at low power. In general, once the decision is made that a fire exists and the aircraft is stabilized, straight and level flight, engine shutdown should be immediately accomplished by shutting off fuel to the engine, both at the engine fuel control shutoff and the wing pylon spar valve. All bleed air, electrical and hydraulics from the affected engine will be disconnected or isolated from the airplane systems to prevent any fire from spreading to or contaminating associated airplane systems. It should be noted that some of these control measures may be less effective if the fire is the result of severe damage. The fire may take slightly longer to be extinguished in these circumstances. In the event of a shutdown after an in-flight engine fire, there should be no attempt to restart the engine unless it is critical for continued safe flight, as the fire is likely to reignite once the engine is restarted. Preventive measures On some engines, tubes carrying flammable fluids in hot areas of the engine are constructed with a double skin. Should a fracture of the main fluid carrying tube occur, the outer skin will contain any leakage, thus preventing any possible fire ignition. The engine bay or port is usually cooled and ventilated by atmospheric air being passed around the engine and then vented overboard. Convection cooling during ground running may be provided using an internal cooling outlet vent as an injector system. An important function of the airflow is to purge any flammable vapors from the engine compartment. By keeping the airflow minimal, the power plant drag is minimized and as the required quantity of extinguishing is in proportion to the zonal airflow, any fire outbreak will be of lower intensity. Air is induced from the intake duct and also delivered from the fan to provide multi-zone cooling, each zone having its own calibrated airflow. The power plant cowlings are provided with an adequate drainage system to remove flammable liquids from the nacelle, bay, port and all seal leakages from components that are drained overboard at a position such that fluid cannot re-enter the port and create a fire hazard. Fire detection. The rapid detection of a fire is essential to minimize the fire period before engine shutdown drills and release of extinguishion is effected. It is also extremely important that a fire detection system will not give a false fire warning resulting from short circuiting caused by chafing or the ingress of moisture in the case of electrically operated systems and shaves of the capillary resulting in loss of the contained gas in the case of the gas-filled continuous element sensing type.
A detection system may consist of a number of strategically located detector units or be of the continuous element, be it gas field or an electrical sensing type that can be shaped and attached to preformed tubes. The sensing element can be routed across outlet orifices such as zone extractor ventilation duct to give early detection of a fire. In the case of electrical systems, the presence of a fire is signaled by a change in the electrical characteristics of the detector circuit according to the type of the detector, be it therm thermistor, thermocouple or electrical continuous element. In these cases, the change in temperature creates the signal which, through an amplifier, operates the warning indicator. Both the thermocouple and the thermistor detectors have properties making them ideally suited for this application. The thermocouple comprises two dissimilar metals which are joined together to form two junctions. As the temperature difference between the two junctions increase, an electromotive force is produced in the circuit and it is this electromotive force that triggers the fire warning displays. Another form of continuous element sensor takes the form of a capacitor consisting of a tube containing a dielectric material with a conductor running through the center. A voltage difference is applied between the tube and the center conductor. As the temperature increases, properties of the dielectric changes correspondingly with the value of capacitance. This change of capacitance is displayed as a fire warning. Fan wall detectors works based on this principle. At high Mach numbers, the considerably higher temperature levels may be such as to render the thermistor or thermocouple fire detection system unsatisfactory. Thermal detectors that sense either a temperature rise or a rate of temperature rise may therefore prove more suitable. Alternatives to the birth types are surveillance detectors that respond to light radiation from a fire. These may be made so sensitive that they respond only to the ultraviolet and infrared rays emitted from a kerosene fire. Most modern aircraft use a combination of fan wall type sensors and infrared sensors. Fire containment. An engine fire must be contained within the power plant and not be allowed to spread to other parts of the aircraft. The cowlings that surround the engine are usually made of aluminium alloys which will be unable to contain a fire when the aircraft is static. During flight however, the airflow around the cowlings provides sufficient cooling to render them fireproof. Fireproof bulkheads and any cowlings that are not affected by a cooling airflow and sections of cowlings around certain outlets that may act as flame holders are usually manufactured from steel or titanium. Most of the potential sources of flammable fluids are isolated from the hot end of the engine. External fuel and oil system components and their associated pipes are usually located around the compressor casings in a cool zone. These are separated by a fireproof bulkhead from the combustion turbine and jet pipe area or hot zone. Fire extinguishing. Before a fire extinguishing system is operated, the engine must be stopped to reduce the discharge of flammable fluids and air into the fire area. Any valves such as the low pressure fuel cork that control the flammable fluids must be situated outside the hot zone to prevent fire damage rendering them inoperative. This is accomplished by one common fire handle. This controls the fire by cutting off the fuel supply available for combustion, pressurized air to any sump fire, and by removing sources of reignition such as live electrical wiring and hot casings. Air can also be denied to the fire through the discharge of fire extinguisher. This is done after arming the fire bottle, pulling the fire handle, and finally depressing the fire extinguisher button. After a fire has been extinguished, no attempt must be made to start the engine again. This would probably re-establish the fluid leak and the ignition source that were or the original causes of fire. Furthermore, the extinguishing system may be exhausted. The extinguishing system uses extinguishing that is usually one of the Freon compounds. Pressurized containers are provided for the extinguishing and these are located outside of the fire risk zone. When the relevant electrical circuit is manually operated, 
the extinguisher is discharged from the containers through a series of perforated spray pipes or nozzles into the fire. The discharge must be sufficient to give a predetermined concentration of extinguisher for a period that may last between 0.5 to 2 seconds. The system is generally one that enables two separate discharges to be made. Engine overheat protection. Turbine overheat does not constitute as a serious fire risk. Detection of an overheat condition, however, is essential to enable the pilot to stop the engine before mechanical or material damage results. A warning system of a similar type to the fire detection system, or thermocouples suitably positioned in the cooling airflow, may be used to detect excessive temperatures. Thermal switches positioned in the engine overboard air vents, such as the cooling air outlets, may also be included to give an additional warning. Research and development The success of flame extinguishment is dependent on the mass fraction of suppressant in the airstream. Thus, the speed of suppression injection is more important than the total mass of agent deployed. To deliver an extinguishing concentration of suppressant to a fire, a significantly higher mass of an agent with a boiling point higher than the engine and cell temperature must be discharged compared to an agent with a boiling point below the prevailing temperature. Therefore, a fire suppression system designed based on room temperature test data is inaccurate as it may well fail to provide adequate fire protection when activated at low temperatures. In today's technology, fire simulation programs such as Falcon, FDS, and FPM can help design a fire suppression system in practically any space inside an aircraft and can guide design of qualification tests which may be required for acceptance of a fire suppression system for an aircraft. Full-scale nacelle testing were carried out by the Next Generation Fire Suppression Technology Program, otherwise known as NGP, and almost all the predicted borderline extinguishment outcomes were extinguished. Research has been carried out over the years to find a suitable replacement for Helen 1301, which has been widely used since the 1960s. However, no inorganic compounds were identified that met the screening criteria for suppressant fluids and there were also no organic compounds that did not contain a halogen or phosphorus atom that met all the screening criteria, especially for fire suppression efficiency. Therefore, they came up with ways to improve the suppression delivery system. One such example is improved powder panels, which is as weight efficient as the Halen 1301 system. It can provide excellent quenching of ballistically initiated explosions in the aircraft drive base. Compared to conventional designs, these new panel designs provide greater powder release into the dry bay, better dispersion of the powder to prevent ignition of the short line, longer powder suspension to prevent ignition for a longer time, and greater flexibility of design to effect application-specific objectives. Suggested improvements Our team suggests that the key to engine fire protection is to implement more precise measures. Fires usually start small and may not be visibly detected by the flight crew. Hence, thermal imaging cameras could be placed near hotspots for pilot surveillance. Our next suggestion would be to place spray nozzles at those hotspots to release small jets of extinguishion which are harmless to the engine to douse the fire out when a fire breakout occurs. This is as opposed to releasing the entire mass of suppressant, which rendered, renders the engine useless afterwards. That way, not only would the fire be put out, the engine wouldn't need to be shut down. We have come to the end of the video. We hope that the video has been informative, educative, and enjoyable for you. Thank you and have a nice day.